There's been a revolution in the cockpit these last few decades, and ForeFlight has led the way. It's one of the most powerful tools in most pilots' kits. Like any tool, though, it works best when you know how to use all its features, starting with the basics. In this series of videos presented by ForeFlight and Flight Insight, we'll guide you through all the important points. As a new user, you could start familiarizing yourself with the fundamentals from the first time you open up the app, so let's dive in. When you first download ForeFlight, you'll have some pop-ups to go through in order to enable push notifications and network access. ForeFlight uses notifications to send you important flight plan updates like TFRs, weather alerts, or ATC acknowledgements. Local network access allows you to connect ForeFlight to external devices like an ADS-B receiver or flight simulator. If your iPhone or iPad is GPS capable, you'll be able to enable precise location access as well. Once you're set up and have launched the app, we can take a quick look through ForeFlight's main views listed out horizontally along the bottom of the screen. The airport's view is a database of detailed airport information from METARs and TAFs to approach plates and taxiway diagrams. The maps view is where you'll spend a majority of your time in the app, and we've dedicated a later video to just this tab. Working with your geo-reference location, this is the primary moving map with layers for weather, traffic, airspace, and more. The plates view is used for storing and organizing airport diagrams and instrument procedure charts for use in planning and in flight. Documents provides a digital library for downloading and storing manuals, checklists, FARs, and your own uploaded documents. Imagery provides dozens of high-resolution weather charts, satellite imagery, and graphical forecasts. The Flights view provides a form-based alternative to flight planning on maps, with added functions like advanced performance calculations, a pre-flight weather briefing, and flight plan filing. The scratch pad replaces your pen and paper kneeboard. Using your finger or an Apple Pencil, you can jot down anything during planning, flight, or debrief, like ATC instructions, maneuver diagramming, or weather info. To use any tool effectively, the devil is in the details, so let's tap the More tab to find a wealth of additional views allowing you to configure aircraft profiles, set up weight and balance, and even manage your own custom charts and map overlays. We'll touch on some of these in subsequent videos, but all of them are well worth having a look at. A fairly new resource that ForeFlight has added is the built-in Discover tab. Here you'll find tutorial videos, user guides, and even pro tips straight from the ForeFlight team. To get the full picture of everything ForeFlight has to offer, navigate to the Support tab and have a look especially at the Pilot's Guide, which is your complete reference for all things ForeFlight Mobile. With that quick tour out of the way, let's round out this video with a brief introduction to the all-important Maps view. Since you're using ForeFlight on an iPhone or iPad, your fingers are doing all the work interfacing with it. So let's go over the basic gestures it supports. Like nearly every app in existence, you can zoom in and out with a two-finger pinch and can also zoom in with a quick double tap and zoom out with a quick two-finger tap. When it comes to interacting with map elements like airports, METAR-derived flight category markers, or TFRs, a quick single tap provides all the relevant details in an interactive sidebar, and another tap on any blank part of the map or on the close button dismisses it. Single tap is by far the most useful gesture for interacting with most things on the map, but there are a couple other good ones to know about. Press and hold anywhere on the map to open the Add to Route sidebar containing a number of options. We can add a waypoint to our route at the specific latitude-longitude coordinates we tapped on, see details about any airspace we tapped on, and even highlight it on the map by selecting it in the sidebar, or see a list of nearby airports, nav aids, and waypoints, which we can also add to our route. Last but not least, we could place two fingers on the map simultaneously to summon the ever-useful ruler, then move it around to measure distances and bearings between any two points. So in this first video, we're just starting to get familiar with the app. In the next videos in this series, we'll take a closer look at interacting with the map, configurations and preferences, and the basics of building a flight plan route. Until then, you can play around with the features we've already covered to get more comfortable with them too. See you next time.